Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the April 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. This month we were inspired by blueberries, so some deep purples, lots of shades of blue, and some hints of a rust orangey red. Uh, this little color was something that really excited me and honestly, you can't really see the rust. You can see maybe a couple hints. Um, in the final colorway that I dyed in the live stream. But it has cooled here in the dye bath, and you can see that all of the color has absorbed. The hints of rust in this one are so subtle, but it is a little bit less subtle in the very first colorway that we dyed in the stream. This one is a lot less pigmented, and I decided to pump up the volume and the pigmentation for the final colorway. But we're not done. <laughs> and the reason why we're not done is we've got some leftover dye. Not a lot of leftovers, but it's still leftovers. And well, I don't want to leave any dye behind. So what I'm going to start with is about half of this is a blue and black mixture uh, everything in this video we did with food coloring today someone asked me on instagram if i was actually going to dye yarn with blueberries and that would have been so so fun to do for this project but no we didn't use actual blueberries um, we used the Wilton colorite system the base black the base blue a little bit of Wilton icing color in copper and delphinium blue and then we used navy from Americolor, which is unique because the navy contains blue number two. And that's a hue that isn't present very often in food coloring. I know that an old Wilton's Black had it, the more recent ones don't. Uh, so yeah, blue number two isn't something, and I don't know why we don't see it very often, but it is in the navy color from Americolor. So uh, we did use that today. The dye bath has a lot of acid in it. This is the same dye bath we use in the stream and yep I'm using my hands um, but the water is maybe a little bit of warmth in it but it's mostly cool. I am slowly taking another skein of dry stroll fingering weight yarn and submerging it. It's a little bit almost like dip dyeing because you know, I'm going from one end to the other. This is to allow us to get some amount of pigmentation across this whole skein. And we've got this beautiful, almost dusty blue from mixing the base blue and the base black. Uh, I like dyeing this particular yarn, so Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, I like dyeing it dry a lot. You can see a lot of that pigment has cleared already. Um, but I like using it while dry. It does soak up liquid really, really quickly, which makes it a really nice candidate. Okay, so of the other colors that we've got, I've got a hint of some eggplant left. So a little bit got out and I just added some water to our cup. And again, things are still cool. I'm just sort of adding some hints of this color around. Just a little so I wonder what this rust is going to do. Maybe I want to dilute the rust a little more. I just diluted our rust color. While I am using food coloring today, oh interesting. Well, we're going to go with it. While we're using food coloring today to create this colorway, I am using my dedicated dye equipment, which means that uh, everything here is not used for food. In theory, I am more than comfortable using food coloring in my standard kitchen dyeing equipment. Uh, so in general, that isn't something that would concern me. But today, everything is dedicated for dye and not used for food. Now, I didn't completely let that color set. I think some of it is going to start striking, but you can see we're almost, it's almost making the background a little more gray, which is kind of cool. Uh, I could go ahead and just add color only to the one side, but I do want some 
decent penetration. So I'm adding some to this side as well. I don't have the heat on still, uh, but I want to leave no dye behind. I still have a bunch of that inten more intense blue, but I'm sort of enjoying what is happening. So if I lift up the yarn, you can see that in some cases, you can see where it may have struck. In other cases, we're seeing um, it spread, and it's just feeling and looking cool. There's no other real way to put that. And one of the reasons why colors are striking a bit now with no real heat is that there is so much acid in here. I like randomly applying colors and seeing where it takes me. Um, and these different hues, the purple will very likely get lost. But this color with its subtlety and like orange and dusty blue is beautiful. It's almost going to be a shame to add on that darker, more navy color. I'm going to turn on the heat now and I want to go and dilute this a bit. And in fact, I'm going to rinse all the other cups into it in the process. The heat is on high, we're slowly heating up, and I dissolved that into about almost 700 milliliters. So I think it still might pack a little bit of a punch. Uh, we've got a lot of this, but if I had left the color as concentrated as it was, we would have gotten one dark patch on here and that pretty much would have been it. So this is going to allow us to layer and have more pigment distributed on the yarn. Uh, the, the volume and the concentration of dye that you add to your project determines how far you can spread the color, but not the total amount of color. Like if I took all this and just one at a time layered it back and forth in the same spot over and over. It might not be super sharp, but all the dye is going to that same spot, um, and so we would end up being able to build up that color slowly. But instead, I'm choosing to build it up slowly all over the whole skein, rather than get one super dramatic dark patch, we're gonna end up with something that is a bit more subtle overall. And without even stopping, you can see that there's some spread there, but we're still going to have some variation and some subtleness to this whole colorway as a whole, which I'm actually really, really excited about. Uh, I, If you guys are curious about dyeing yarn with food coloring, there are a few things you need. So you need acid, you need the artificial food coloring, which in the US is limited to a red 40, red 3, yellow 5, yellow 6, blue 1, and on occasion we find blue number 2, but that one is a lot less common than some of the other things colors that I mentioned. So you need the acid, you need heat, you need the artificial food coloring, and then you need your yarn. Food coloring works very similarly to acid dyes. It's the same mechanism. You need a protein-based yarn to dye it with food coloring, which means that you need uh, wool, alpaca, silk, mohair, angora, something that is animal fibers. Plant fibers like uh, cotton and bamboo won't work with food coloring. Neither will synthetics like acrylic or polyester. Nylon is a unique category as far as synthetics go because the chemical structure of nylon is very, very similar to the structure of protein fibers, and so that is why that works. But oh, I actually really, really like this, and it is so, so subtle. These little, like, orange, it makes it more like the background is both more gray and more dusty with that orange in there. You can see there is a lot of pigment, a lot of blue that is in just like 
in there um, that still needs to absorb but we're getting it's like it's got a soft layer but there's un, like there's differences when you knit with the stitches you're gonna see variation in between the stitches which is just I don't know I love it I absolutely love it okay I am going ahead and adding the rest of the dye I'm not gonna add more vinegar this had initially the total would have been 16 cups of water and then six maybe 11 tablespoons of vinegar so there is plenty in there but we have successfully left no dye behind and created a unique colorway that still works <laughs> with our inspiration photo so I'm pretty excited and I'm gonna let this heat for about 10 minutes 10 minutes are up and well my spoon is a little bit stained right now but we can see that color is clearing I'm gonna turn off the heat leave this in here to cool and then we'll go wash and take care of it off camera I am going to skip showing you guys the washing step today I don't usually show that in the dialogue recaps but I want to thank you all from the bottom of my heart for tuning in and making uh, today's live stream because I'm filming this on the same day I streamed uh, I want to thank you guys for making it such an amazing success I had so so much fun and thank you for being understanding of things like my dog and my kids requesting snacks and things like that if you love these live streams and love the yarn that I create the biggest way you can support the Chemnitz tutorials YouTube channel is by subscribing having your notifications on liking and commenting on these videos this helps the channel grow and share my content with more people. So thank you so much for engaging with the streams and with the content I'm creating. The yarn showcased in today's video will eventually make it into the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop and a lot of the yarn from my videos actually ends up there. So you can watch the videos, bring home the yarn, and turn it into something beautiful. I also have a Patreon if you're interested. I'll have links to all of this in the video description in addition to some of my social media handles and things like that. But now off camera, I'm gonna go wash the yarn, put it through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and then in what feels like seconds, we'll be reviewing the finished dry yarn. Here are the three different colorways we created as part of the April 2020 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. Our inspiration was blueberries, and I think that each of these sort of bring that tart and sweet flavor to mind. The little hints of rust are the most obvious in the first colorway we did that is a little lighter, but you do have a few of those hints in our deeper skein. It's just they are a lot more subtle, which is a little more consistent with that blueberry picture. When we did our first colorway, I sort of wanted to test the different hues. And I would say that the purples and that rust really come through more than the blues that we have here. And so I knew I wanted to pump up the volume with the blue, but I did love this colorway for its own right and wanted to include it here in the video. When we pumped up the volume, oof, this is sort of what I was going for. We have so many hues of blue and navy in here. Pops of purple and then those hints of rust. Here now you can finally see that those purple hues are absolutely present. Uh, sometimes during the live streams it's hard for my webcam to pick up certain hues. And one of the hues that it seems to struggle with the most is a purple. And so it was just hard to show then that, that I promise the purple is in here. During the stream, I mentioned that the colorway reminded me of my Antarcticus shawl. And I couldn't find it at the time, but I found it right after the stream. What amuses me now is that at the time, this colorway felt so pigmented. I don't think I was yet pushing food coloring to all of its limits. And I mean, this was a leave no dye behind skein and I absolutely love the randomness in it. Uh, I think that this more saturated colorway would look gorgeous in some kind of garter stitch shawl or shawlette. I'm getting really into incorporating some unexpected colors as an accent in the colorway. Uh, this definitely started when a rust came out accidentally. It broke in a yarn cake where I was injecting color into it. And that 
has sort of had me look for this tone everywhere. And I'm really excited with the way we were able to play with this for the April Dialogue. Finally, with the color that we had left over and in the effort to leave no dye behind, in this recap, we used all of our leftover colors on one final skein of Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. This yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and is ideal for absorbing food coloring. But what we created was something so subtle and neutral feeling. Food coloring colors are vibrant and bright and can lean on neon. But with the right mixtures and with enough acid around that the colors aren't breaking, you can get something that feels really subtle and neutral as well. Gosh, I love all of these colorways and each for slightly different reasons. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down in the comment section below. Well, that's a wrap on the April 2020 Chemnitz Dialog live stream. I had so much fun and man, blue number two, I think is really, really special. Uh, it feels and gives this extra punch that I think blue number one, as much as I love it, just doesn't have. There's this depth and richness to blue number two. I really think I might be ordering some more Americolor Navy. Uh, one of the old Wilton Blacks that was my favorite had blue number two in it and it doesn't anymore. I'm not sure why, but yeah, I think getting some more of that Americolor Navy is in my future. And now it's time for my favorite part of these dialogue recaps where I get to showcase some of the yarn that you dyed, inspired by the same handful of blueberries. Uh, there are so many different techniques, and the way that different people will pull different colors from an image is so much fun to see. And it's fun to see how many colorways are really similar or really quite different when we're all looking at the same photo. If you'd like your yarn to be featured in one of these recaps going forward, share your project with the hashtag ChemnitzDialong on Instagram or reply to the inspiration photo with the yarn you dyed on my Facebook page. And I try to include a link to that Facebook post in the live stream uh, descriptions. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoy my videos, please subscribe and turn on notifications. This will make sure you never miss a live stream or a new video, and it's a great way to make sure you stay up to date with everything that's happening in Chemnitz land. Yeah, I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of this colorway. And I am so happy that I added those pops of rust. Like that little contrast, I think, gives it that much more depth and dimension, and I'm just so excited. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.